Global leaders panic. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our show today, a shocking bombshell announcement changes everything. And I want to understand why this is so dire, because the contagion risk that started in Japan, as we talked about in yesterday's show, is now starting to spread through financial markets around the world. And the Federal Reserve, as you're about to see, is going to make it much worse and perhaps trigger what could be the beginning of a massive sell-off in global equity. And with that, let's head over to Bloomberg, where we picked today's story up with the headline, as Japan morphs into the center of worry for global investors. Now, think from an economic perspective. We thought China would be the epicenter, or perhaps Germany's manufacturing base. But nobody saw what Japan was going to do. And as they move rates higher, it triggered the unwinding of a carry trade. The problem is it's spreading and quickly. The country was a darling of the financial world for over a year as its weak currency pushed the stock market to record highs and rekindled inflation after decades, something the Bank of Japan was eager to have happen. Then the Bank of Japan hiked rates last Wednesday and the governor indicated he intended to keep going, helping trigger a sharp rise in the yen and wild gyrations across global markets. Traders and investors were forced to abandon strategies based on macro views or more along the lines that the Bank of Japan could never raise rates and their currency would stay weak. And yet what we saw was just the exact opposite, the Bank of Japan unwinding this massive carry trade. And I want to understand exactly how this worked. And now think of it as you have a home and you have equity in it. So you take a line of credit or a home equity line against that because you see the prevailing interest rates are relatively low and your view is they're going to continue to stay low and you're going to take that money out of your house and you're going to invest it in higher yielding higher risk assets and as long as housing prices rise and interest rates stay relatively low then the carry trade works but what happened during the global financial crisis is that housing prices fell and so in the case of what's happening now the yen is going up and this is triggering a margin call no different than someone who has a loan on their house that's upside down and the bank says it's time to pay it down it triggers a massive amount of selling now the fear is it's not just japan who's un going to unwind it's another country that's going to follow quickly behind it as management and former BlackRock fund manager said, Japan is now at the center of an emergent worries across everything from stocks, bonds, yen, credit, and everything. And this is why we saw a shock move from the Bank of Japan today. And volatility course to Japan's markets with the Nikkei 225 suffering its biggest rout since 1987 on Monday, only come roaring back by 10% the next day. The whiplash carries implications for the country's politics and households as market turmoil could impact consumer confidence and Japan's delicate climb out of deflation. And adding to investors' headaches, the yen weakened as well, which was a blessing because when we look at the course of consumer confidence here, and this is the key thing, we know that political elites around the world are always worried about the stock market. Now, investors believe if the market goes down, well, that's going to lead to a rate cut and you as more money pours into the equity markets. Hang tight on that thought because it's not exactly true at all. But when we look at consumer confidence, we can see here the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey in blue against the NASDAQ 100. And you can absolutely see where declining stock market does impact confidence because it destroys wealth. And when people lose money, well, their confidence in the economy goes down as well. And so what you see is really a declining stock market isn't what confidence causes sentiment to start going down, it exasperates it. And here you can see that link again in 2021 into 2022. And then all of a sudden the market turned around and confidence went with it. But something that also is going up right now should be your trading account because we put out amazing trade for our subscribers yesterday. In fact, in one day, it jumped 1.2%. And unlike the equity markets, which are turning around right now as we film and are selling off, well, this trade only looks to go higher because it's 
something sitting at its 10 year low. Now, how do we identify this? Well, we run the machine positioning across a wide range of asset classes every day. We look for when the machines are deep short and price moves against them. That triggers on a report. But if you're looking to beat the machines, but maybe you trade momentum, you keep getting it wrong, you get in late and out early. Well, we look at momentum on those technical signals over multiple time frames, and when we see a big reversal and then a change in momentum to the upside, well, that flags our reports as well. So you can get the daily reports, you get all of my tradable signals, and then I go through all the trades and tell you which ones I think are the best ones. We give you stop loss levels, we track those trades and returns so you can duplicate each and every one of them, something you can't do with all my buddies, and weekly updates on the stop loss levels. And here's the best part, you want to get in on this trade, it's not too late. There's a 30 day free trial, links in the description below. Once you sign up, you're gonna be amazed at how you can beat the machines and get ahead of momentum. And adding to investors' headaches, again, weakened by more than 2%. And this, of course, the BOJ said they wouldn't raise rates as long as markets are unstable. And this is really the bombshell announcement. But when you think about it, this is exactly what markets wanted to hear, that they're not going to raise rates in times of uncertainty. And that sent, of course, overnight futures roaring higher, only to find out there wasn't a big demand for stocks, at least at the time of about intraday trading, as I film right now. Now. But here's one of the issues. Central bankers never raise rates during times of uncertainty. The fact, throughout history, they don't do it at all. In fact, we can go and look at the federal fund rate shown in blue against the NASDAQ 100. And when equity markets are unwinding enough that it signals economic malaise and a recession, well, that means the Fed's cutting. So the odds that the Bank of Japan would be raising rates in the midst of an economic disaster, well, that's unlikely. But this was the bombshell announcement markets wanted to hear. The problem is the risk in Japan is starting to spread. And as I'm going to show you, the Federal Reserve could unwind the biggest carry trade in history. The risk is that consumption and investment will be held back due to the increased uncertainty in the markets. And that is absolutely the case. You know, we talk about Alan Greenspan on the show, and he actually discussed the wealth effect. And that as people feel wealthier, they tend to spend, particularly if they believe their wealth is going to continue to grow, they'll spend today knowing they're going to get richer tomorrow. But the problem is when your wealth is getting eroded and quickly or eviscerated, as we saw in the markets earlier this week, well, then that means it affects people spending in the other direction. And if it drags on, it could affect business behavior and households as well. And that's absolutely the case. Because we can look at advanced retail sales here shown in blue, not on a year over year rate of change against the NASDAQ 100. And what we can see is that retail sales typically tend to start slowing down ahead of a market decline. But again, as the wealth effect kicks into the downside and people lose money, well, what you see is of course, retail sales continue to go down as the market falls. We see that relationship here a couple of times, suggesting that if stocks were to come down at a point where retail sales are barely growing to begin with, that this could be devastating for not just the US economy, but the entire world's economy who depends on consumption from US and consumers every day. This would damage China's economy, damage Japan's, Europe's, it would be a huge mess, which is why all of a sudden when you see see a big route hit the markets, the politicians and bankers, well, they start to panic. This outsized response compared with previous instances of carry trades being quickly unwound suggests there's more play in Japan than recession fears, and that could have global ramifications if it continues, and that's exactly the case, because what if we see a safety trade where money goes into the yen, drives it higher, and then squeezes more people in this trade to the point where they have to sell? And what happened on Monday is people sold into an illiquid market, and when we talk about about liquidity, we don't mean just money in the system. What we mean is there has to be buyers and sellers. So when there's no liquidity, it means there are not enough buyers to deal with all of the people who want to sell. And when that happens, you see large moves of asset prices to the downside.
And there's an emerging view that the BOJ's move was a misstep. Well, that's not quite the case. Influenced by political pressure, as several prominent politicians have called out the weak yen in recent weeks. And the reality is for any central banker, they don't want their currency to be too strong and they don't want it to be too weak. They want it to be, well, just right. So when you see things like the yuan or the yen falling in value, yes, central bankers are going to react because they think they have authority over the currency and as it turns out, we know they don't, but in this case, they believe it because the market tells them that they do. And that's the key point here, is when central banks raise rates, it's meant to be bullish for the currency. In this case, because the yen was continuing to weaken and spur inflation, the central bank had no other choice but to raise rates, and that kicked off a massive unwinding in this carry trade. But can it get worse? Well, the answer is absolutely, and we know the Fed could be the one to unwind unwind at all. Because what happens next is what if the Fed were to start cutting rates for some reason? Remember that now possibility coming in September. As we look at the federal fund rate against the yen to U.S. dollar shown on the right, and what we can see is this carry trade of the yen just skyrocketing broke the market. But we can go back and we can see a couple instances where we note that the Fed starts cutting rates and the yen goes up in value. And that is the current risk now to Japanese markets and global markets is the Fed cuts in September, perhaps more than people expect that triggers a further unwinding of the carry trade. And next thing you know, you're in the midst of a massive global sell-off. And this course tells us the carry trade is out of danger, at least in Japan, as many of people are saying. But watch the yuan, as City Kwan say, that's next. It's right. It's spreading across the world because there are more positioning worries on the funding sides of the carry trade, and in particular the yuan, rather than on the long carry side. This according to the Citibank team. The Chinese currency was swept up in the popular Trump trades where the threat of tariffs was supposed to lead toward a higher dollar yuan, and now we're facing the potential risk of an unwind of that carry trade as well. And still elevated carry returns, weak domestic demand in China, and our expectation of continued monetary policy easing by the PBOC are likely to drive the dollar yuan back higher with currency positioning more balanced after several rounds of carry unwinds. And that is the danger side here is people are betting on the yuan going down in value, which makes perfect sense because fiat currencies aren't a consequence of central bank action. They're a consequence of global trade. So when there's demand for a currency through trade, it goes up in value. The problem is we know that Beijing, much just like the Bank of Japan, doesn't want to see its currency go down too much. And if they did a devaluation or some other move to bring it up, well, that would, of course, as we can see now, cause a bigger unwind and more carry trades. And overall positioning and carry is not clean yet, but it's below the danger levels that we monitor. Well, that is danger levels for now until something changes, and that change could be the Federal Reserve. Because Goldman CEO Solomon says the Fed will forego emergency cut. Well, there's no question about that, despite weak jobs data. Because remember, the Fed doesn't react to the stock market until it's validated the economy is slowing down. And those bets now show investors seeing little change. The U.S. Central Bank reduces rates prior to September, but they still expect now a half a point cut at the two-day meeting that ends on September 18th. And based on the economic data we're seeing now and the messaging from the Fed, I think it's likely we'll see a cut or two in the fall as well. But keep in mind, once the Fed starts cutting, Historically, it means the U.S. economy is heading to recession. They don't just make some safety trade cuts here. They actually start cutting and then cut even more. And there's some evidence that the global economy, including the U.S. economy, is headed down. And that will spur, of course, more rate cuts as inflation, according to the energy markets, is now heading in the favor of the Fed cutting. And keep in mind, if the Fed cuts here and the Bank of Japan doesn't, well, you're looking at a big potential unwind of more of these carry trades and a bigger decline in stock prices. As we turn to Zero Hedge, who says that West Texas Intermediate extends bounce off its six-month lows after six straight weekly crude draw. But keep in mind, the draw of crude isn't here the issue. It's the increase in gasoline inventories, 
three, four million, and distill it at 949,000 because when those tanks of gasoline distillates fill up, well, then you'll see crude inventories rise. What we're seeing here is demand for U.S. consumers decline, and that is dangerous because what it means is demand goes down. Well, inflation is coming with it. As we take a look at the consumer price index against U.S. regular all formations gas price, both shown on a year-over-year -year rated change, and we can see here in red as U.S. regular all formations gas prices go down, well, it means inflation is going to fall. That's going to head towards the Fed's 2% target, putting them on track. As Citibank experts believe could be two rate cuts. Again, a half a point cut in September. If the Bank of Japan can't move because of inflation, well, look for an unwind there. And if the yuan goes up in value because, of course, everyone believes in when the Fed cuts, the dollar goes down, well, you can see that carry trade start to blow up there too. And the next thing you know, as the Fed starts cutting into a recession, things will blow up in a big way. So as you see, things aren't over yet. There's a reason that global leaders are panicking because things are about to get much worse. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.